Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining me today. I'm very honored to share how to develop BPF tools with like BPF and BPF CRE at KubeCon. First of all, let me introduce my little bit. My name is Wenbo Zhang. I come from PinkCap, the company behind TiDB, and I'm an active contributor to Lab BPF tools. I was fortunate to get a lot of help from Andrew Nakariko, who is the BPF and BPF CRE project leader when I was contributing to Lab BPF tools. I learned a lot from him and the community, and I enjoyed communicating with them. Now, let's get down to the topic. I will share my experience about writing BPF applications with Live BPF. I hope this topic is helpful to those who are interested in Live BPF, and it could inspire them to further develop and improve BPF applications with Live BPF. So let's first see what's BPF CRE first. Before talking about this concept, let's think about what BPF portability is. We know that the development of the kernel is very period. Although backward compatibility can be guaranteed at the system core layer. Changes within the kernel subsystem don't guarantee this compatibility. When we use BPF for system tracing, we often need to get function parameters, read fields in the struct, and so on. Obviously, BPF programs need to fix this compatibility problem. Therefore, we need to carry a clarify the probability of BPF. BPF probability is the ability to write the BPF program that will successfully compile past kernel verification and will work correctly across different kernel versions without the need to recompile it for each particular kernel. The solution to BPF probability is BPF CRE. Some people may have some doubts on the necessary uh, necessary necessary of BPF CRE. When we use BCC, it seems like we don't encounter any compatibility issues. So why do we need this new thing? The answer is yes, we need it. The reason is that although the Emergencies of BCC is a major improvement in the BPF development experience. It has some uh, notable shortcomings. It used the C on front end to modify your the right BPF programs. When a program occurs, uh, when a problem occurs, it's difficult to find the problem and figure out the solution. You have to remember naming conversations and automatically generated trace point structures. Because the lab BCC library contains a huge LLVM or CLAN library, when you use it, you might encounter some issues. When the two starts, it takes many CPU and memory resources to compile the BPF program. If it runs on a server that lacks system resources, it might trigger a problem. BCC depends on kernel header packages, which you have to install on each target host. If you need an exported contents in the kernel, you have to manually take copy and pass the type definition into the BPF code. Because BPF programs are compiled during runtime, 
many simple compare, uh, compilation errors can only be detected at the runtime. This affects your development experience. By contrast, BPF UIE has this advantage. When you implement BPF UIE, you can directly use the live BPF library provided by kernel developer, developers to develop BPF programs. Their development method is the same as writing ordinary C user mode programs. One communication generates a small library, uh, a small binary file. Lab BPF acts like a BPF program loader and relocates, loads, and checks BPF programs. BPF developer, uh, developers only need to focus on the BPF program's cor uh, correctness and performance. This approach minimizes overhead and removes huge developments, which makes the overall development process smoother. This is why we need BPF CIE and why is the future of BPF. BPF CIE only consists of four parts BPF tab information. Compiler, BPF loader, kernel. I will walk you through one by one. BPF tab information, which allows to capture crucial pieces of information about kernel and BPF program tabs and code. It enables all the other parts of BPF CIE puzzle. What's exciting is that in the latest kernel version, 5.11. Kernel has also implemented support for model BTF. Compiler uh, is still on, provides means for BPF program C code to express their intent and record relocation information. BPF loader ties BTFs from kernel and BPF program together to adjust compiled BPF code to specify kernel on target hosts. Kernel, while staying complete, uh, completely BPF zero IE. Agon agonistic provides advanced BPF features to enable some of the more advanced Synergies. That's the hello world with lab BPF. As mentioned before, the BPF application is divided. Uh, it's divided into two parts. The BPF program that needs to be loaded into the kernel and the control part. On the left part of the finger. It's a very simple BPF tracing program. It's triggered when the right system core is initiated. It gets the process ID that triggered the right request and prints it out. The part of the right is the standard process. Let's talk more about it. BPF application typically goes through the following DAS. Open DAS BPF object file is passed. BPF maps, BPF programs, and global variables are discovered, but not yet created. After the BPF app is opened, it's possible to make any additional adjustments citing BPF programming tabs if necessary, pre-setting initial values, programmable values, and so on. Before all the intent, uh, before all the uh, entities 
are created and loaded. Load, load fast. BPF maps are created. Various relocations are resolved. BPF program problems are loaded into the kernel and verified. At this point, all the paths of a BPF application are vacant and existed in curl, where no BPF program is yet executed. After the load phase, it's possible to set up initial BPF map state without racing with the BPF program called execution. Attachment phase. This is the phase at which BPF programs get attended to various BPF hook points, such as trace points, key probes, signal hooks, network packet processing pipeline, and so on. This is the phase at which BPF starts performing useful work and read or update BPF maps and global variables. Teardown phase. BPF programs and are detached and unloaded from the kernel. BPF maps are destroyed and all the sources used by the BPF app are freed. Generated BPF scarcity uh, has uh, corresponding functions to trigger each phase. Name open, creates and opens BPF application. Name load, instantiate loads and verifies BPF application parts. Name attach, attaches all out to attach, attachable BPF programs. As optional, you can have more control by using lab BPF. Uh, F APIs directly. Name destroy detaches all BPF programs and frees up all used resources. We replace the name with minimal, which looks like the picture on the right. In attention to these typical faces, there are a few small tips about the faces to share with you. The first is combine the open and the load faces. We mentioned earlier that some setup work can be done after the open phase, but if there are no such requirements, we can compile the load phase and the open fast together. Their example in the uh, figure comes from the lab BPF project, which is used to measure the cost of autonoma. Selective attach. By default, BPF skeleton will automatically attach all BPF programs, but sometimes we don't want to do this. We'd rather selectively attach certain BPF programs based on com command line parameters. So we can attach manually as shown in the finger. This is a tool from the Live BPF tools project to detect the delay of the block layer. Selective load. Earlier, we mentioned that the program can be attached manually, but this has two obvious shortcomings. One is that we load an unnecessary BPF program. In addition, we can't use standard faces well, and the code looks unclear. So the community has a new API to control whether to load the BPF program automatically. This is a tool from the Lab BPF project 
for starting the delay distribution of the of some methods in ESD4. If these two runs on the new version of the kernel and supports model BTF, then we choose to load the uh, F entry BPF program. Otherwise, we choose to load the Kipro programs. Custom load and attach. Scarcity is suitable for almost all scenarios, but there is a special case, first events. In this case, instead of using links from a struct named BPF, you need to define an array. Struct BPF links, a uh, uh, struct BPF link links. The reason is that perf event needs to be opened separate, uh, separately on each CPU. After this, open and attach BPF event by yourself. Finally, during the teardown phase, remember to destroy each link in the links and then destroy links. Multiply handlers for the same event. Starting in version 0.2, Lab BPF supports multiply entry point BPF programs within the same executable and the linkable format sessions. Therefore, you can attach multiply BPF programs to the same event, such as trace points or key rows this was worrying about ERF session name clash. For details, see at BPF for support for BPF to BPF course. Now you can naturally define multiply handlers for an event like shown on the right. Before that, you need to define two different events tabs for the same event. Reading kernel structures fails. You may be aware that at the present, we have only seen LabBPF API related and didn't feel that it has anything to do with the probability of BPF. Then we will now introduce some programming content related to BPF theory. Let's first look at how to achieve BPF probability in reading structure members. The first is BCC way. BCC will conveniently rewrite task point to PID into a core to BPF probability, which is great. Though some camps might not work depending on the complexity of an expression used. With like BPF, because it doesn't have VCC code writing magic at its disposal, there are a few ways you can achieve the same result. If you are using recently added BPF program tail tracing BPF programs, then you have a smartness of BPF verifier on the other side, which now understands and checks BPF tabs natively and allows you to do follow pointers and read kernel memory directly and safely, avoiding BPF appropriate cores. So you don't need compiler rewriting magic to get the same noise and familiar snack case. You can also use like BPF and BPF program tab tracing way. Pairing this functionality with BPF CRE to support portable, uh, such as relocatable field arrays, you have to include this code into built in preserve access index compiler building. You can also use BPF program tail tracing 
and BPF survey. That's it. It will work as you expect, but will be portable between different kernel versions. But given the bleeding edge, recency of BPF tree uh, program uh, type tracing, you might not have the uh, luxury of using it yet. So you have to use lab uh, BPF appropriate accessibility inside. Non CRE lab BPF way. Now with CRE and lab BPF, there are two ways to do this. One directly replacing BPF bulk rate and BPF core rate. BPF core rate is a simple macro which passes all the arguments directly to BPF probe rate. But it also makes the CLON record build or offset relocation for third argument by parsing it through built in preserve exercise index. So the luckiest example is actually just this under the hood. You might, uh, you may have a question. If a field has been removed from the structure, is there a way to deal with this situation? The answer is yes. You can use BPF core field exists micro to do this. Here is the example. From kernel uh, file, Point fifty, uh, as a, a member of a struct uh, has changed, so we can use this to exist it to find if it existed. Another scenario that causes BPF compatibility issues is kernel API changes. For this case. BPF CRE provides two uh, compar uh, compar mer uh, matrix solutions. Lab BPF provides external kick, uh, kick config values and struct flavors. Lab BPF provides externs as a simple idea. BPF program can define an external variable with the well-known name, such as kernel version, uh, Linux kernel version, to extract a uh, 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 running kernel version, or a name that matches one of the quick fix I, KIs, case, uh, such as config hc, to get the value of hers that kernel was built with. And like BPF will do its magic to set everything up in such a way that your BPF program can use such external variables as any other global variable. This varieties will have correct values matching the achieve kernel your BPF program is executed in. Additional, BPF verifier will check those variables as known constants and will be able to use them for advanced control flow analysis and that code in emergency. Here is an example for dealing with transparent interface Compatibility. After introducing how to deal with BPF compatibility issues, let's take a look at how to pass control information to BPF programs. BCC's approach is 
achieved through string replacement. Because the BPF program is a string for BCC and can be modified at well at will. If BCC is not reused, the traditional achieve is to write configuration information into the MIP. This MIP search is not efficient. Although the information writing in the MIP, MIP is static, the BPF verifier can't recognize this situation. So some optimization can be made. The solution to such a admin, uh, admittedly uh, complex use case is though using read-only global data. It is signed once by a control application before the BPF program is loaded into a kernel. From the BPF program side, this looks like a normal global variable exercise. There won't be any BPF map lookup overhead. Global variables are implemented as a directed memory exercise. Control application site view site initial initial configuration values before BPF program is loaded. So by the time BPF verifier will get to validation of a program. Configuration variables will be well known and read only. This will allow BPF verifier to track them as known consistent and use its advanced control flow analysis. So here is an example. We can naturally pass some future conditions to the BPF program, such as the PID that we want to filter. Next, let's talk about data storage related context. Beginning in the kernel 4.86, BPF hash maps perform memory pre uh, allocation by default and introduce the BPF at no pre alloc flag. The motivation for doing so is to avoid BPF with a group, key group with BPF deadlocks. The community had tried other solutions that in the end, pre looking as a map elements was the simplest solution and didn't affect the user space with full behavior. When full memory allocation is too memory expensive, define the map with the BPF app no pre log flag to keep old behavior. For details, see BPF map pre log. When the map size is not large, such as map entries is 256, this flag is not necessary. BPFF no pre log is slower. One advantage of lab BPF tools is that it's portable. So the maximum space required for the MIP may be different for different machines. In this case, you can define the MIP without specifying the size and the resize age before load. For example, in name BPF C. Define the map as, as this. After the open test, call BPF map resize. Not only can you use global variables to customize BPF program logic, you can use the 
instead Google Maps to make your pro programs simpler and more efficient. Global variables can be analyzed. You just need to set global variables to be a fixed size, or at least with the bounded maximum size if you don't mind wasting some memory. For example, because the number of soft IQ tabs is fixed, you can define global errors to zero counts and histogram in soft IQ in BPFDC. Then you can traverse the RAM directly in user space. If you want to know more details, you can read the following articles. The first two articles were written by BPF Mightner, which is very valuable and tells a lot of knowledge related to principle. The last one was written by me, mainly related to actual compact. If you want to try it out, you can start with the following two projects. About us, PinCap is a software service provider committed to delivering one-stop experience to create database solutions. KaiDB is an open source distributed new circle database for elastic skill and real-time analysis. That's all. Thank you.